Okay, thanks for being here, and welcome. Okay, I think we're recording. It looks like we've just gotten back up to zero degrees Fahrenheit outside. This morning it was minus 20. Very strange when you're waiting for the weather to get back up to freezing. So I want to show one picture. One picture has inspired me to share with you today. One picture in this city. The city that we're looking at here. This is early 1900. And where are we? This is not the picture, by the way. We're just warming up. Where is this? Again, 1900. This ties in with my last video and has a very similar history. Here's the same city in 1889, so 10 years before that photo. Where could this be? We are in the city of Seattle. Seattle, Washington. And how interesting that this city today is a pretty booming city. And yet it came after Tacoma, the city I featured in my last video. Tacoma got the railroad first, and later Seattle. And it will be a very similar narrative. A very, very late start, and everything just booming. Established in the old world style, as we can see here. But I thought I just had to introduce a tiny little bit of background before I show you this photo. This is Seattle, Washington. We were told that they had to raise the streets and level certain areas. And just looking like an absolute reset wasteland. Like the ground has been sucked away. But what interested me most about this very, very early photo of Seattle, Washington was this little skyscraper back here. Look at this thing. This is the earliest photo of Seattle. Most people might be looking at this house or this one. These men down here. It looks like a, the gallows or something right in the center here. Is somebody hanging? Let's zoom in a little more. But what I noticed in the earliest photo we can see is a full-blown city back here. Skyscrapers. And then this one. Hello. What? Is this, I mean, looking as modern as anything today? Sharp and crisp corners. Millions of bricks, I'm assuming, in this time period. Or is it just pure concrete right off the get-go? So, I don't know. It's worth looking into the history, finding out exactly what date this photo is. And then we could ask why is there a beautiful, modern skyscraper in the background? And even another one behind it here. Another half mile or so behind it. So here we are. Here are more similar photos. And here we can see the exact photos. Looks like somebody has broken it down a little. Exactly where everything is. So this is great. So this back here is the Josephinium. Built originally as the New Washington Hotel. And here she is. It looks like today it's a Hilton. Built in two years, 1906 to 1908. And actually what we can see is it doesn't have this configuration today. It's as if this bottom section is missing. Let's go back and look at the original. Kind of reminding me of the Hyatt in downtown Phoenix. And here it wasn't until 1906 that Seattle finally acquired a major railroad terminal. So late in the game. And the railroad itself came to Seattle in 1884. Seattle in this area was a freebooting and often lawless town. There were at least four deaths by lynching in 1882, just like it appeared in that picture where I was saying a guy looked like he was hanging. Schools barely operated, and indoor plumbing was a rare novelty. In the low mud flats, where much of the city was built, sewage was almost as likely to come in on the tide as to flow away. The streets were potholed to the point where there was at least one fatal drowning in the street in a pothole. This is a new town. The Chinese were a key role in 1883 in making this city happen. Women played a significant part 
in civilizing Seattle. The first bathtub with plumbing was in 1870. And then, of course, in 1889, they have a great fire. So it really doesn't make any sense because there shouldn't be a whole city. I mean, they're pretty much admitting that there's a whole city in 10 years. And then in 1889, started by a glue pot, the fire burned 29 city blocks. 29 city blocks like this, these kind of city blocks. So again, how did they get all these blocks built in 10 years only to burn? When they tell us it was a lawless town, the railroad doesn't come until after Tacoma. And then we have this new Washington Hotel that we are told is built in two years. And here she is. So in this pile of shit, they were building buildings like this in two years? Come on. There's no road. Here, we can see where a road should be, and it's just filled with water and mud. Is this possibly the best case for this research ever? A nice, old, westy, mud filled town, people hanging in the foreground, and mind-blowing skyscrapers, looking like the Hyatt. This is an official picture. Again, you saw me do a reverse image search, just to be sure. And yes, let me know your thoughts. Let's look at something else. I think people watching is very popular. We like to imagine what people are thinking. This is a photo from westernmininghistory.com. Really fascinating. I hope to share all of it. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the photos that were given as official history are 100% trustworthy. This man looks like he just got off the train, hobo riding. And he's thinking, God, I wish I was back on the train. Look at those guys working so hard. And this guy's thinking, why did I sign up for this? I don't care if they fire me. I'm done. I'm taking the next wagon out of here. We'll get back to these guys. And this is the Yule Marble Quarry. Love it. I'll show you some pictures of that up above. And this guy. This guy is thinking, God, I just need to take a leak. I hope nobody can see me back here. And here's the boss. The boss is thinking, these lazy bastards. I've got a fortune to make. And this guy is thinking, this project is never going to happen. We've been trying to move this block all day. I should just lower that little cabin down there in the woods somewhere. And forget about this way of life. And these guys, I mean, how worthless. What is going on here? I mean, we seem to have some machinery. What are they thinking? Why are we even lifting these stones by hand when we have this machine here? Why don't they unhook that damn block in that little cabin and lower down some kind of basket? Where do they think we're going to haul these rocks to? And this guy's thinking, shut up, the boss is watching us. Just pretend you're busy. Just keep moving these stones. This guy's shoveling this coarse, unshovelable rock. Where's he gonna put it? What's the plan here? I think that's what this guy is also thinking. The hobo. These guys don't know what they're doing. They don't have a plan. This guy's thinking, I hope the boss sees me. I was drunk yesterday. Almost got laid off. The boss is thinking he'd better not be drunk again. So, this is the Yule Marble Quarry. Let me show you some more Yuleage. Looks like there's one of the little cabins. And this is the size. If you remember the Wyoming video I made, they were skidding two-ton blocks across the desert floor. Just stupid. Here is the maximum that they can move on these carts on the rails. Probably about a two-tonner. And the reason they told us they had to skid them across is because they had no means to lift them like they do here. I mean, even to get the skids under it, you would have to lift it to some extent. Here again, hauling marble slabs in Marble, Colorado. And this is more reasonable. And this is the Yule Marble Quarry that I wanted to show you. Boom. So are we to believe that they just came up here and just carved? That somebody really carved this chunk out here? I mean, there's so much to work with down here. Why are you even going to go way up here? You saw the maximum size that they were able to haul. This is like a star fort. As I've said before, mines and quarries are something else. Here they've boarded up this window. There we go. You see the boards up here? Boarding up this opening. And this, 
Looks like an old stairwell impression in the side of the wall, right? Of course I don't know. These are just my thoughts and something I stumbled upon. A past and great civilization existed, has been erased from the realm, and we're still not that advanced today. That's all. That could just sum everything up. Still not as advanced as these past people were. 2000 BC. There, we're given dates. 2000 BC for this. Oh, and this one. 13 BC. 1300. It looks more like a ship or some kind of vessel. Here, we see a ship next to it. Is that a sign? 1390 BC. Here, Karnak, the Temple of Amon. 1292 BC to 1213 BC. It's so certain. But it doesn't matter. This is advanced, and we're not given the whole story, I think. Here, here the Parthenon. 447 BC to 438 BC. So what is that, 10 years? 10 years in BC times. And it's absolutely superb. Just the ruins. And how was this really destroyed? When was this really destroyed? Buildings from BC. BC. And here's what we have left. And this is the good stuff. Everything else would be facaded moving forward. This is all pure. All cast, in my opinion. Not carved cast pieces put together like a puzzle and here all the puzzle pieces are just scattered around ah here built in 437 to 432 bc why do they even tell us these things five years five years was it destroyed in five years or built i mean look at this i'm sure they'll give us renderings of what it looked like as if they are psychic and again these ruins are in the style of everything, all the capital buildings, all throughout the realm. These grand stairways, grand columns, it's their hand. But these are simply some of the oldest and finest examples of this building and architectural style. The same thing we will or will have looked at in India, all over India, but here in particular with the Goa ruins. So let's look at something else. I had considered sharing something in Colorado over here with you. It was inspired by a documentary I watched called The Million Dollar Highway. And if you don't know, The Million Dollar Highway is right here in between Durango and Ore. Ore is just a mind blower. And just everything actually along this million dollar highway is worthy of discussing. This is one of the scariest highways I've ever driven on. I can recall the feeling of driving down this highway. A feeling of terror and wonderment at the same time. Wondering if I'm going to drive off the road and plunge to my death while in complete awe with the beauty surrounding me. And long ago, even when I lived in Colorado, I thought impossible, just impossible, build this highway in this early time period, in this early mining Old West time period. No way. And here's a little look at some travelers. And really, this is how it feels today. I mean, it's twice as wide, but whoever's on this edge pretty much has no guardrails, and it's just a plunge to your death. And if there's a rock slide or an avalanche, you're toast. And I don't believe that they built this, at least this original path. I've seen paths to this day in the middle of nowhere. Roads that I've walked with Chief that I know damn well nobody built. But yet there are roads that snake around mountains, almost like a ziggurat or a Tower of Babel. Even here we can see a lot of right angles in the stone. You probably know where I'm going, but I won't go there. I just want to say that I don't think it's possible to build something like this. It's almost impossible for them to maintain it. And originally there were guardrails, but they had to remove all the guardrails because they had trouble pushing the snow off. You can't push it up against the mountain side here. And so they've just removed all the guardrails, exposing these thousand plus foot plunges. 
And yeah, if it's snowing up here, and again, I've been up here with bald tires in the snow and not fun, but much better than whatever we would get in this early time period. But there was this part of the highway that was like a castle. And I saw it in this old documentary. And here we can kind of see some, but not as impressive as other parts. This is a really poor picture. But the thing was lined with these. And these were just megalithic blocks. I'm not sure if they were comprised of smaller building material. But they were old world. And in this documentary, they told us they removed them because they were impeding the snowplows. And if you don't snowplow, this is just worthless otherwise. Just completely worthless, this highway. If you don't maintain it with the avalanche, rock slides, and just washing out of the road in heavy rains, it's in a place that almost shouldn't exist. But really, it's full of mining. It has been mined, and ever since I got into this research, I've considered this area. It's like the entire top of the mountain has been mined. I mean, some parts don't even have roads going to them, and they tell us this is all the result of mining. I mean, a scar. Let me drop the man down on this million dollar highway so you can just kind of get a feel for this. There we go. You see those mountains up there? And they are treeless, and there does appear to be mining, but not up here on the mountaintops. I mean, nobody came up here and just removed the mountaintops. I mean, that's what we're told. That's the story. And while I was just hiking with Chief, I was thinking about this. And I hope to pull up that image for you, showing you that photo. But it seemed clear to me that this highway was built by... Well, I think that's a wrap. I think I have said enough. Thank you so much. I love you all. God bless. And I'll see you soon.